Hello viewers and welcome back to the adventures of Emerson, Jimmy, Madeline and Tala aboard the HSS Horus in Space Haven. Uh, we had a slight bit of technical difficulties in the last episode and uh, we did reset the crew position back a couple systems or a couple sectors from where they were. Our main concerns today are expanding food production because the crew is rapidly running into problems with protein deficiency. As you can see, Emerson and Jimmy both are feeling a little bit protein deficient. Whereas Madeline is just hungry, oh, but just ticked over to seeing protein deficiency on her as well. So that means we're going to get have to get more meat into this crew. We do have an entire large grow bed set to produce artificial meat, which should be ticking over relatively soon. But unfortunately, it means the crew just doesn't have enough production, meat production, to keep up with their needs. We also aren't producing any nuts, so which is going to provide some essential nutrients also. So we're going to have to assign one more grow bed for that. Um, so that's going to be the first thing we do once we finish the research for it. Research is underway to make grow beds. We're about halfway there. There's some water to mine in this sector, however, or ice. However, we have plenty of ice. So we're just going to skip that and we are going to tell the crew to jump to the new sector as soon as they wake up. Let's Speed time up a bit so they wake up sooner and we can get this show on the road. Here they go, taking bets on who wakes up first. It looks like everyone hopped out of bed simultaneously. And now they're arguing. As usual. There's no food available, so nobody nobody's going to eat, which is a little bit frightening. But they all just don't really want to do anything but yell at each other this morning. Taking a look at what that has, if that has any effect on their status. Not really. Jimmy felt someone was mean to him and he got rejected. Madeline, someone was mean to her and she's starting to get a lot hungrier. Tall is fine. And somebody said a joke that she liked. Madeline, meanwhile, someone was mean to her and she got comforted. And someone thanked her. So I guess... They appreciate that she's working hard, even though nobody really likes her. Emerson immediately hops over to research console. Jimmy punches in the jump coordinates and off they go. Heading over this direction, we see that there's metals and carbon available in this system. And a derelict here. One more, we see energy down here. A derelict and metals up here. Energium is always going to be a critical resource for us, but we're up to 16 energy rods right now, so it's not terribly critical. However, in the in the interest of exploring, we'll head down there. There's also raw chemicals here. We're going to mark that system as one we want to come back to for sure. But right now, it's the Hyperium we want. So we're going to drop here and pick up this Hyperium. Madeline is running some logistics tasks, but she's going to immediately be retasked with mining. And there is a, what looks like a merchant ship, merchant federation ship. The good ship probably is here. <laughs> the good ship probably. All right, let's mine all the Hyperium as fast as possible. And let's check out the trade opportunities with the good ship, probably. They'd really like some Quantronics. They do like plastic, so I think we're going to give them our plastics in exchange for food. So if we dumped all of our plastics on you... And there's not really anything else you want that we can supply at a good price. 
If we dump all of our plastics, you could give us some um, base food. Which is a complete and balanced nutrition. That's actually probably the best deal for us because if we buy that, then we don't have to worry about nutrition for another few days. So let's go ahead and do that. Can we afford four space foods? Not really. Almost, but not quite. Um, I think we're going to, going to give up a hyper fuel because we're about to mine some. So, giving up one hyper fuel. Let's give up two hyper fuels. How much did we have to mine here? Seven. So, it takes two Hyperium per hyperfuel, I believe. It's going to be three and a half. That's not really worth it. Let's uh, call it two hyperfuels, or one hyperfuel. We're happy with that. We'll pay them some money for the food. Am I right about that ratio? Two to one? In the energy refiner, it takes two hyperfuel to make one. Yes, so we're going to make three and a half Three and a half Hyperium off of this. Plus we wasted we wasted one in trade. So that's really two and a half that we're picking up here. Really need to chase chase down more Hyperium. Okay, Madeline hopefully is off mining, yes. Emerson hopefully is gonna crank out more research for us. Tala and Jimmy doing what they can. There's plenty of untended jobs. Emerson decides he's going to help with the trading. We really would rather you just sat at that console all day long, Emerson. <laughs> there you go, buddy. All right, he's up to 21 out of 40. Jimmy and Tala can handle the logistics. And let's get it going a little bit faster. Looks like Madeline is back from mining. Oh, sorry, that was the ship going out to trade. That wasn't Madeline. Madeline's still mining. Just noticed everybody's health is low. That's, so that's the effect of protein deficiency, is it just directly drops your hit points. Every now and then they pop back up, though, like something's happening. Maybe Resting for a while brings it back up. I'm not really sure. Emerson, working on that science as fast as humanly possible, at least with this crew. Except every now and then he just feels the need to go do something else. Twenty-eight of forty. There's no other way to see that other than going to the research screen, as far as I could tell. Maybe clicking on the. No other way. Madeline's finished most of the mining. We will probably task her with the metals. After that. Can't have too much metal. Meanwhile, it's about the end of the day. So she's probably not going to finish mining the Hyperium today. She has a couple of hours left. But here she comes back home. So there's two left for her to finish. But she's done for the day. She's going to go on break. Everyone's on break and then to bed. Um, we did manage to get food. So let's see. They didn't eat it though. Oops. Looks like Jimmy's just eating straight out of the crate there. <laughs> I wonder what that was. Interesting. Fatty acids and protein deficiency now. Great, maybe they'll eat that stuff for morning. Now, I imagine that those crates are sitting here, so it might be a couple days before they 
have the manpower to move those crates to somewhere where they can actually eat it. So Emerson's protein and fat deficiency. Let's see what a fatty acid deficiency does to you. Learning slower. Great. Increases likelihood of accidents. Reduces chance of recovery. So, um, so Jimmy is not yet suffering from that, but he will be soon. We do have some food, so I'm hoping that that helps them recover for a bit. It would be really nice if we managed to stabilize our food production at some point. How did we do on growing today? Look at that. Our protein is just about to finish growing. Fantastic. Okay. What about our vegetables? Vegetables have just started their cycle. And fruits are halfway through theirs. Plenty of untended tasks. Let's skip through to the morning. Let's see if we can't finish this research. Uh, looks like the crew did manage to go and grab some food out of the pile. Down to food. What did that do for them? So, I'm not sure who ate it. But everyone is still suffering from deficiency, even though at least two of them had decent meals today. Not the panacea I was hoping it would turn out to be. Madeline heads off for mining to finish the mining. Um, I'm actually going to tell her to finish this metal mining as well. Since she should have plenty of time. The rest of the crew can concentrate, hopefully, on the botany and logistics tasks that they need to get done. We may have to tell Madeline to cancel the mining and just concentrate on logistics because... Starting to pile up, as usual. Plenty of logistics jobs just sitting there, waiting to be done. No one's feeling very well right now because of the food. Alright, we managed to finish the research into grow beds. We're going to... I believe... Go back to the advanced research because what we're really trying to get to... I've already forgotten. Hmm. I'd really like to get that targeting jammer. I don't think that's probably the best idea right now. We don't need weapons or shield console, but we will need weapons console to be able to make missile turrets. Um, we'll need the shields console to be able to make the targeting jammer, so we'll need that. We don't really need any of these fabricators. It would be nice to get the hypersleep chamber someday. So probably wasting time on this advanced research wasn't the best thing to jump into. Um, I think we probably already have this X2 power generator running. I think that just means how big it is. I'm not sure. Um, we don't actually know how to make artificial meat right now, which is interesting. So maybe we want to learn advanced nutrition. Ah, oh, look at this. Advanced nutrition increases the growth rate. Okay, yeah, we we want to we want to get there. What's this do in general? Research speed. Okay, that's why. So we want to do advanced research because that increases our research speed. So let's finish that. And then we'll switch to advanced nutrition with hopefully a higher research rate. There's also optronics, which also increases our research speed, and quantum, which also increases our research speed. Let's see how much a research speed bonus of 10% will improve our advanced nutrition. Luckily, we already have planted artificial meat, so I bet if we didn't have it planted already, we wouldn't even be able to do it. Um, it doesn't look like you need to research anything special in order in order to plant nuts, fruits, and vegetables. 
So we're going to finish this advanced research because that will increase our research speed in general. Although maybe it makes sense to increase our growth rate first. We'll see. It's going to take a few days, at least two days to finish that. Meanwhile, Madeline is pumping up the mining for us as usual. And as usual, we can't manage to move everything around that we need to. Emerson every now and then feels like, hey, I, I did something. And then goes, takes a break, heads back and tries to pump out more research. Looking at Emerson, his deficiencies are gone. But he's, oh, and Tala, so I'm thinking Emerson and Tala are the one who managed to get a real meal. The other two, Jimmy and Madeline, are still suffering. Emerson's getting the research done, although it looks like about 50-50 whether he's successful or not every, every tick. We'll see by the end of the day how well he did. Madeline might finish the base metals. If not, we will uh, we'll give her tomorrow to finish that. Taking a look at that, our storage. We still have plenty of storage space. Taking a look at the ship. Ship still has plenty of space. And only four system points left. So at best, we could get two more weapons, which would make us like equally competitive with that uh, the pirate that we ran into before the crash last time. Um, which just means like, unless there's a way to increase the system points, like the best you can do is become competitive with the pirates. You can't really outgun them. I suppose we could outgun them by having fewer shields and more guns. But there's no way to just make your ship completely overwhelmingly powerful. I suppose we could have a second ship. That's really probably the answer right there. Maybe even have several smaller ships. Who knows? We, we always have had the ability to just start a new ship. So maybe it makes sense to have like one ship here be kind of like the resource generator ship and then have a bunch of smaller tender ships to be weapon ships although again you're not going to do that without crew so it really always just comes down to your biggest bottleneck is people the more people you have sure the more you'll have to feed them but they'll be able to get things done this tiny crew of four people can barely hold it together Feel like just one more person would be enough where we could get the logistics tasks taken care of. Incoming ship next turn looks like a Android collective ship. The mining is finished, so it is the morning and we are going to jump. Madeline just making it back. huge pile of logistics tasks to run through so even if we do jump we're not going to send Madeline out mining right away all right so looking back we still have this site back here we do have several derelicts to take a look at we managed to get six hyperium and we're up to eight, eight hyperfuel so that gives us a total of 11 hyperfuel let's head out this way to see what is over in this region all right, we've got ice, and we've got a way to jump to the new sector. So I think what we do is we head down here. Um, maybe we drop and start looking at these derelicts. There's no pirates anywhere near us. Let's take a look at the derelicts, see what we've got. Madeline's been itching for a fight. 
before we do that, we're probably going to concentrate on logistics just to clear space. Um, I suppose there's no reason for Madeline not to just head out immediately. As soon as she drops whatever, drops off whatever she's got going here. Looks like she's taken, probably taken biomatter to the composter. There she goes. Madeline, you're drafted. We know you love hunting the bugs. Hop in, please. Everybody else, please continue with logistics. Get that airlock cleared. This ship will dock, it looks like it's another one of these. There's going to be bugs on here, I guarantee it. Madeline hops out into the unknown. It's very cold, she says. But doesn't see anything dangerous. I lost you. What's over here? Up into that one. Oops. Yep, shoot the door. That's what I meant. <laughs> Alright, if there's going to be bugs here, they're going to be in here. What will we find there? That's a new console. <gasps> there are bugs, but I think we may have found someone in a sleep chamber. Oh my goodness. Let's clear the rest of the bugs. Hopefully not kill Madeline. Let's actually slow this down to a manageable speed. Um, we're going to run through the rest of the ship, but we definitely want to take a look at that. Ooh, wow, there's some uh, cocoons on the ship. Oh, God. All right, Madeline's in trouble. I'm going to pause. We are going to grab the rest of the team, and we're going to tell Madeline, hopefully, to... Actually, you're going to dock back at the other airlock. Madeline is down. Not looking so good. She may be dead. Oof, sorry Madeline. Really didn't expect that thing to hit you so hard. Alright, pick up her body. Wrapped her in a cocoon. And guess what, team? You are all drafted. Um oops, draft everybody. Get you all over here. Hopefully we can rescue Madeline. It does look like she's no longer a member of our crew. The rest of the team is not too terribly concerned with that because they hate her. However, they do realize that that means there's extra work for them to do if they can't get her back. The interesting thing is we did see a some kind of hypersleep pod on that ship. So if we can find a new crew member there, that would finally be turning the corner. Look at that. Madeline is strapped to the wall there, where they're probably going to try to implant an alien in her. I do see an alien egg there in front of her. That's a bit alarming. That uh, creature that attacked her was moving quite fast. She didn't really have time to react. Hopefully... Three people with guns will be able to react faster than one person with that slow shotgun. This is really the most excitement we have had in Space Haven since starting this series. Pretty excited. Will they rescue Madeline? Will she be impregnated with alien spawn? <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, everybody, let's head out. We're going to have to move pretty fast because we are going to be short on air pretty soon. We know 
Now the last place Madeline was seen was kind of in this direction. Open the door. Okay, Jimmy did get hit, but so Jimmy, I want you to stand back, please. Tala, you are the least damaged, so step into that room, see what see what's in there. Anything? Don't see anything. Um, there is something scary coming down the hall. So let's see if we can't get an angle on it. Oop. Open fire, please. Tala? Please open the door. It looks like Emerson's going down. Jimmy's going down. Everyone's going down. Oh god, there's so many. Get out of here, Tala. Get out of here before it's too late. Oh no. That's it. The crew is down. We finally found a ship with a hyper sleep chamber on it. And it was too late. To their own hubris. Their own desperation. The entire crew has been captured by aliens. An ignominious end to our heroes and there they go it looks like Madeline is actually available she's too tired and she's cocooned and unconscious it's interesting now that they're all cocooned hmm they're becoming members of our crew again is it possible that they can escape I sincerely doubt it. I mean, it's kind of looking like there's a rotten corpse on the wall here next to Madeline. No workers assigned for task. So we did just lose Tala and Jimmy. We don't know where they are. Looks like this thing is carrying one of them and is going to attach them to the wall there. Jimmy got attached. Oh, the first time we run into a new form of alien and the entire crew is captured. Well, the only question we have, is there any way for them to escape? It doesn't look like it. I guess we're just going to Speed things up and watch them get eaten. These worker bees or worker ants are coming to inspect them. What is this? We just don't know. Looks like, unfortunately, Tala is wide awake. Says she's unconscious, but you can see her looking around. She knows what's happening. <laughs> Wall cocooned. Fantastic. I love it. That's actually a great way to end this series because I'd like to start over start over with the new version uh, see if we can figure out how to do research properly maybe build things a little bit more efficiently next time uh, be a little bit less ambitious with our resource production and a little bit more ambitious with our travels So we leave it here. Suppose we could create a new ship with no crew on it. Oh, look at this. The pirates are coming. Maybe the pirates come and rescue them. That would be interesting. Maybe the pirates come and blow up the ship. It looks like we're on the ACS Blade Fire. I see. So the horse is still here, but there's nobody there to man the weapons. So are the pirates just going to blow it up? So, is that going to be the end? Tala is still unconscious. Can I draft you, Tala? Nope. Condition prevents drafting. Override. 
All right. Parachute Aegis has entered the system. What are they going to do? I suspect nothing. <laughs> They're going to... Huh, interesting. We can see the ship from tactical view, but can't even see it on non-tactical. Fire ship starts shooting at the Horus. Horus is going down. The demand that Reese surrender proposed the whole fire engine negotiations. Negotiations are established. Who are they talking to? I guess the automated systems accept their surrender. And they're requesting communications. Sure. There's nobody there. No, we're going to hang up on those pirates. Look at that, we made friends with them. No, never mind, you can blow it up. We will watch as they destroy the horse, maybe. Or just let it all evacuate into space. There, here come, here come the pirate energy cannon projectiles. And there goes, ship destroyed. The HSS Horus is no more. After approximately three months in space, the entire crew is destined, destined to become nothing more than incubation vessels for the infestation of aliens. Thanks for sticking it through. Thanks for watching. Um, I will likely start a new series uh, in Space Haven with this new version. Um, if this didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, I'm sorry, but that's just how it had to go. So thanks again for watching. Tune in next time to Space Haven. Bye for now.